Hello everyone, this is Amdula Aziz Ola once again from AOS Academy, the number one language and linguistics institute. Thank you very much all of you again for tuning in to yet another video for our research tips. Now um, today we are going to be working on um, the topic how to write a research introduction. A lot of people when they have gotten to collect their data and um, they know exactly what they want to do, they have drafted their proposals, they tend to actually lay back not knowing what to do, not knowing how to commence their project after, even after their proposal or chapterization has been drafted. So as a result of that today we are going to be talking on the research introduction. And for the research introduction, one, one thing you need to note is that the chapter that is responsible for your research introduction is the chapter one. It is the one that has actually been laid down because it is, it is from your chapter one you begin writing. Your, your 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 project. So it is from that chapter that they expect of you to actually give a detailed introduction of what exactly you are trying to embark on in the totality of your project work. And as a result of that, we are going to begin with some of the main, not the overall, but the main content of your research. Um, introduction, your chapter one. The main content, as we have it here, are seven in number, and I'm going to list them. However, these differ. These differ from department to department, from faculty to faculty, and of course from school to school, depending on what exactly they approve of. Now, the main ones that we have are the background to the study. The background to the study. Some people call it general background to the study. It's the same thing. Now. Um, apart from that, we have the statement of problem, we have um, the research questions and or the hypothesis. It can either be research questions or research processes. And we have aims and objectives of the study, or some people call it objectives of the study. Some even call it purpose of the study. Now, apart from that, we have significance of the study and we have also scope and limitation of the study some people call it scope and organization of the study some people even differentiate between scope and limitation some use scope for an aspect and while others use limitation for another aspect of the chapter one after that we have operational definitions of terms key terms the main terms in your um research work now um, I would like to explain to you what exactly would um, all these aspects contain. We'll start with the first one, the background to the study. Now, under the background to the study, you are going to give a brief introduction of what you are expected to do in your project. You will talk about the short history of the subject of investigation. Take for instance, let's say your project work is um, on the topic, the toponomastic study of place names, a case study of a Lorry metropolis. Now in that kind of instance, you are going to talk about the study of place names. Now in there you are going to define how did place names come about, how did people start studying the concept of place names. You would give it in brief, you are not going to go in detail, just in brief. And you give a scholarly definition of the word toponomastics or the word place names, the compound word place names, depending on the one you choose. Now after that, you talk about the emergence of the problem. How do you come to see that it is quite expedient on you to study that um, aspect of your research work? You also talk about the circumstances that surround that, um, that subject matter. The circumstances like, okay, how people make use of place names, how people come into the habit of giving names to places. You understand, but you will give it in brief. And if you know any figures or facts about what you are talking about, it's also meant to be in the background of the study, just in brief, as I'm, I repeat, in brief. However, some departments, as I said, departments vary. Some departments want you your background to be like a page, some want it to be half, some even want it to be two pages, depending on what your department permits. Now, apart from that, we move on to the statement of the problem. The next thing, the statement of the problem is always gotten from your general background of the study if you have actually done what is right. Now, for the statement of the problem, what you are going to be talking about is your logical conclusion of the issues in your research work that is gotten from the background. 
Now, on this logical conclusion, you are going to be saying the problem, the reason by which you see a need to actually study that aspect of your research. The logical conclusion in terms of, take for instance, the monomastic study of place names as we have given it, you can say in, under your statement of problem that, okay, since we have been able to, we know our topic, from that you can coin it that people have issues in giving places to names or people give names to places as a result of so 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 and so. Now, based on the previous work that you have actually gotten from your materials, because you have to have been able to have read some things that people have done before you actually give such conclusions and it has to be logical now apart from that we have the aims or aim and objectives of the study some people call it objectives of the study some call it purposes of the study anyone it is it's fine but what is always inside the aims and the objective the aims and the objective is always an elaboration of what your statement of problem is. The statement of problem is always in like one to three paragraphs at most. But the aims and objectives is always in form of statements which are always numbered. And in the numbering, you are going to be giving in total what you want to talk about in your project. Take for instance, the topic we are working on, topomastic study of business. Your first aim and objective is to what? To investigate the place names in the metropolis of Elori. The first one. The second one can be to find out the reason why people um, name places according to some of according to social factors. Now to, the next thing can be to um, understand the cultural benefits of such place names to the Elori um, metropolis or the people, the habitats inhabitants of the London metropolis like that like that like that in um total or let me say in 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 in, in short you can give either four to five objectives that's okay the main aim the aim of the project we know is the study of the place names but your objectives can be four to five now apart from that we have the research questions or research hypothesis now under the research questions the research question reiterate what you have actually given in your aim and objectives of the study but what it does is that it forms a question or um, set of questions from your research um, aim and objectives and take for instance as i said i said to identify the place names in a lawyer metropolis the question can be what are the place names in a metropolis the second one can be what are the cultural benefits place names in Elormi um, give to the Elormi, to the inhabitants who stay in that location. So things like that. Just make sure that your research questions are always coined from your aim and objectives. Because if you have four aim and objectives and you have five research questions, then it is not it is not um together, it is not corresponding. It has to be the same. Either four, four, five, five, and it has to be quite the same thing but your questions are going to be coined from the statement that you get from your research aim and objective now moving on we have the scope and limitation of the study scope and limitation of the study refers to the extent of coverage of your subject matter now you agree with me that when you are working on a project you are not you are not to give or you are not to discuss everything about that work when I mean you're not to discuss, you can't exhaust everything. You have to actually choose the one that is most um, preponderant, the one that is most um, required for you to work on. So as a result of that, your scope and limitation covers what you are going to see sequentially in the subsequent chapters and also what you are going to do and the ones you are going to leave out, the ones you are not going to touch on. That's what your scope and limitation of the study is about. Now, next, we have the significance of the study. Under the significance of the study, we want to know that because for everything you are going to do in your project, you have to actually develop a new thing in the subject matter, in the subject area. You have to contribute to the knowledge, however small. So, we want to know what exactly the benefit people tend to achieve, people tend to get from your research work. And apart from the benefits, we want to know who exactly will benefit from that research work you are carrying out. 
Now, apart from that, we have the next one, the operational def definition of the terms. And in here, you are going to provide us with a working definition of all the key terms during the course of your study. Take, for instance, our um, topic, we said the topomastic study of case names, a case study of the Lord Metropolis. There, you are going to um, define to us what is toponomastics. Two, what are place names? Three, what is a place? So things like that, you are going to give definitions of them in your operational um, definition of terms. Now, apart from that, we have more content, as I've told you earlier, that can be in this chapter. The first one is basic assumption. This one is like the hypothesis. And in, in the hypothesis, what you are going to be talking about is that you'll be giving conclusions that you, 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 you think you can come about you understand? You think you can come about at the end of your research. Take for instance, topomastic study of place names. I can give an assumption or a, an hypothesis that the inhabitants of Ilomi name places as a result of happenings in the past. That is a, a research hypothesis. Now I need to either back up this um, hypothesis, either for or against in my work. So your basic assumptions too is what you assume is preponderant in that um, aspect of the research you are carrying out. Now apart from that, we have historical background of the study. Here, it is mainly for people in the linguistics department and I think some other departments apart from linguistics also use it. And in here, you talk about the historical explanations of people, of places, of case study. Take for instance, um, a lorry, they can give definition. They can give historical definition of Elon, like how did Elon come about? What are the etymological um, evidence about the word Elon? And also, who are the people that actually founded Elon can be in the historical background. Now, apart from that, we have social cultural profile. In the social cultural profile, what we always talk about is the culture, the way of life of the people. The way of life in terms of their food, their dressing, their occupation, what they do for a living, their political administration or government um, administration or even um, rulership as a result of kinship. Now, we have all other things, education, that you can also talk about under the social cultural profile. Now, apart from that, we have geographical location. Where exactly is Elon, for instance, located in Nigeria? That's what can be in your geographical location. Now, apart from that, we have data collection. How are you carrying out your data? Which tools are you making use of to carry out your data? Which instruments? And how exactly are you going about it? Now, we have data collection and um, data analysis. Now, in data analysis, you talk about like the um, approach you are using to analyze your data. And um, lastly, we talk about the brief review of chosen theoretical framework. This is always gotten from the, the data analysis. And in here, we are going to be talking about the theoretical um, approach, the, the theory you have actually chosen in order to use for your study in, during the course of the research. So I hope with all this, you have been able to have at least a brief um, understanding of what your research introduction is all about. If you have any questions about this, or perhaps if you have started your research work and um, you have not yet seen or you have not yet understood what this is about, you can contact us via any of the links below this video right now to actually put you through. And also, if you have started and you see that you can chip in some things which I've not yet talked about in this video, please use the comment sections. We'll really appreciate it and we'd love to get your um comments now that being said please if you haven't subscribed yet to any of our channels please subscribe now to this channel and also contact us after this video if you have any further questions or if you would want us to actually assist you in your project thank you very much and i do hope to see you all in the next video have a lovely day